Today's album should not exist, but it does. This is Vinyl Records and Whiskey. Today's album is Phil Napoleon with Betty Thornton. This is HQ2043, released in Harlequin Records, and this was made in 1986. This is 1946, 1949 recordings. Uh, the sleeve is in terrible condition. It's ripped in front here. The sides are fine. In the back here, you've got the story of uh, this album. Uh, nothing is known of this album. It should not exist. And here it is. There's a guy, is a historian or a biograph who did the uh, legend in the back here. And actually, he doesn't know much either. He doesn't understand how this album came to be. It was never meant to be an album. Uh, to understand this a little bit better, oh, let me see. I forgot to show you the inside. Uh, this is not in super great quality. I think it's a good, good plus. The uh, inner sleeve is a little bit of crap. I put a plastic sleeve in there, of course. Here, this is side A. Let me put in the light for you. It's in pretty good condition, but it doesn't play, uh, let's put it that way, it doesn't play as good as it uh, looks. There's a little bit of damage on it, but again, I didn't buy this for a uh, as a collectible. I bought this because it was inter interesting. Uh, short story, Phil Napoleon, right? His famous jazz and Dixieland trumpet player. Right? He's band leader, he's an established artist. Uh, he's the kind of artist that started performing when he was five in 1910. Right? And then he joined uh, Jimmy Dorsey's band until 1947. Uh, Jimmy Dorsey is the brother of Tommy Dorsey. Tommy Dorsey is the leader of the band that Frank Sinatra was a member of until, yeah, until he left to go to uh, Capitol Records on his own. He played at NBC Radio, that's before TV, right? 46. Uh, NBC radio when back then the shows on radios were not recorded they didn't have a they didn't have records to play right so everything was done live music was done live the show was done live the music for the advertisement was done live as well so he's a he's a professional musician he's there for 20 years and later in life he opened up his own club in Miami called Napoleon's Retreat uh, that was in 1959 he's an accomplished guy also on this album, you have a famous piano player. Uh, his name is Frank Signorelli. Uh, he's a founding member of the original Memphis Five Dixieland band, jazz band as well. He also played with the original Dixieland jazz band. Uh, the two guys have been friends for a long time. They played in the same bands. They crossed paths with each other. Uh, I think uh, Signorelli also did the same at ABC Studio, playing live for uh, the shows for like something like 20 years as well. Now, here comes Betty Thornton. This lady is a little bit different here. Uh, she only had one record before this, and uh, the name of the record was Nice Song for Naughty People. Uh, she's more of a uh, risque, it's still jazz music, right? But it's more like a risque or sexy or a little bit ose. Uh, she sang songs like, uh, if I can't sell it, I'll keep sitting on it, right? Uh, find out what they like and how they like it. And uh, another one is called Handy, Andy. So it's very confusing as what she's doing there. And uh, I did some research on the internet and the only thing I found is a press release saying that uh, she left her full-time teaching job to be an artist. Nothing else. I can't find anything. Uh, the most I found was here on the back and uh, even they are mystified. The professional biographer is mystified by how come these three peoples came together to record. Uh, the two of them, the two guys, yeah, but her, who knows. This album is a little bit special because it's not supposed to be an album. There are recordings from 46 and 49. I'm just going to read uh, how it lays out here uh, because it, it shouldn't be there. Uh, on this album, you get false starts, you get incomplete, and you get uh, different tracks. Uh, for example, you can't have it unless I give it to you. It's a false start, and then they do it again, they do it right. Uh, another one is, I'm a stationary woman looking for a permanent man. Then you get a false start. Uh, this song was recorded on a previous album, uh, but here they give you an alternative take. Uh, another one is, you can't, uh, wait, oh yeah, Margie, Margie, there's one right, one incomplete, and one uh, different track. Then in Jingle Bells, yeah, the lady who sings a sexy song, or yeah, uh, did Jingle Bells. 
but actually it's called Jingling the Bells. So, see, it's a little bit different. Uh, there's a false start and then there's a complete version. Another one is uh, Save It Pretty Bama, also a false start, and then you got three different versions of this song. Um, again, not sure where this is coming from. Betty Thornton only recorded three uh, albums total. The previous one was a nice song for naughty people. We talked about this one. Then after that was songs they don't sing in school. And after that was tit for tat uh, and nothing else after. And again, I tried to Google her. Uh, nothing comes up. She kind of disappeared after that. Uh, these three albums, you can buy them on Amazon. They're all reissued. And, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it's novelty. Is it fantastic music? It's not Charlie Parker, right? It's not like uh, Dizzy Gillespie. It's it's novelty. It's nice to have it. Like this album here, I, I probably uh, it's in my collection. I have other album of uh, Phil Napoleon, uh, the proper music, proper setting, or, you know, proper records. Uh, this one here is there because I was just curious. I think I paid nine dollars for this. Um, it's in my collection. I'm not sure I'm going to replay it a lot. Maybe once once a year, I'll take it out and uh, I'll put it on record, make me laugh a little bit. And it gives you an understanding of how recording works in studios, right? Because of the false starts and, and the alternative tracks. So it's kind of a piece of history. But again, it should not be a record. Maybe uh, when they passed away, uh, these recordings were in uh, one of the family's estate and they decide to release them and generate a little bit of income uh, as a listener of records i find it fantastic and amazing that it's available i'm not sure i would re i would rebuy it but i mean if you're curious about it you don't need to buy the record you can probably just find it online i think it's probably somewhere i think there's a reissue of this or you can buy it second hands anyway that's that for today catch you later